It's safe to say that Huawei have pioneered the dual camera setup in smartphones and their implementation of an RGB and monochrome sensor is almost exclusive and unrivaled. While Honor and certain other smartphones from Huawei do get similar setups, the really high-end setup each year is reserved for the Mate series which then makes its way to the P series and so on. The Mate 10 Pro packs in the very best of hardware and software when it comes to the cameras and has the ability to perform really well. This is Sandeep from Revitalist, let's see how the cameras perform. The P9 was the first smartphone to feature the iconic Leica branded RGB plus monochrome setup that was ahead of its time. Since then the Mate 9 brought in lossless zoom with the help of a higher resolution monochrome sensor and now the Mate 10 Pro incorporates all that as well as several improvements. It packs in a 12MP RGB sensor and 20MP monochrome sensor both with f1.6 Leica lenses. The only other phone outside of the Huawei cam to have f1.6 is the LG V30. The Mate 10 Pro also features OIS on the primary RGB sensor along with laser, autofocus and face detection autofocus. The whole purpose of an RGB plus monochrome sensor is to provide higher levels of sharpness, better dynamic range and more detailing since it takes the color information from the RGB sensor and combines it with the details and dynamic range from the monochrome sensor. As a result, the image quality is pretty good. It has great colors, perhaps the best in the business thanks to the Leica lenses and the dynamic range is great by default. In fact, using the HDR mode doesn't really help to a huge extent in some cases and most of the time you would be fine using the standard mode itself. The HDR mode does help in some cases to extract information from the shadows but the way it does it seems too artificial. Unlike the Pixel photos which look good even after the extensive HDR processing, the Mate 10 Pro photos look quite a bit washed out and sometimes unimpressive in HDR mode. Speaking of low light, the performance in not so ideal situations is absolutely great. There is very minimal noise and most of the time you get a really clean image and one that's well exposed thanks to a bright f1.6 lenses. It even gets better when you use the monochrome mode as the color noise drops and the dynamic range is better. The other issue is in terms of over sharpening. It isn't so evident when you glance at the image at most times but it becomes very clear when you pixel peep. This at times leads to a very weirdly rendered details that wouldn't look good if you crop in too much or if you plan on printing out in a large format. This mainly happens when there's a lot of foliage or too much information in one frame. When you limit the frame to a few subjects or objects, then it doesn't tend to happen much. Since it's only related to processing, I'm hoping that Huawei fixes this issue in the future. The phone does have a portrait mode which isn't too aggressive and the blur applied is quite minimal. What we found to be better was the wide aperture mode which creates an electronic depth of field that would mimic what you would get from a camera with a variable aperture lens f.95 all the way down to f16. This works pretty well and aside from applying a blur to the background, it also converts highlights into bokeh balls which may seem a bit too artificial at f.95 but around f2.8 to f4 it looks pretty good. There's also the added benefit of being able to change the depth of field and focus after you have taken the shot. The phone also supports 2x lossless zoom which means that you get 12MP photos even after hitting the 2x button. It is digital zoom since the camera lenses both have the same focal length and while there is some loss in detail, it still is much better than you can achieve with regular cropping. This can be attributed to a 20MP monochrome camera which captures the extra detail that can afford the cropping without losing out on detail. The front facing camera is an 8MP unit with f2 aperture. The photos taken with this are high on detail and have great sharpness as well as pleasing colors. However, the dynamic range is pretty poor and mostly get the highlights that are blown out. There's no HDR mode to overcome this either, however you do get a portrait mode that houses options for both bokeh to blur the background as well as apply the beauty mode. The portrait mode is more pronounced and sits somewhere between the portrait mode effect and wide aperture mode of the rear camera in terms of blur level. You can choose to apply the beauty and bokeh individually or together. Coming to the videos, the 10 Pro supports 4K resolution at 30fps. It also has support for 1080p at 30 and 60fps. All modes get OIS but only 1080p 30fps gets EIS along with it. The 1080p 30 mode has perhaps the best stabilization I've seen on a smartphone recently. It seems amazingly fluid and stable even when panning. The 4K and 1080p 60 modes are also stable when moving in a straight line or just holding it in your hand and recording. However, shakes become evident as you pan or introduce faster motion. The footage overall is only average in terms of visual appeal since it lacks contrast and you'll need to edit it for it to look good. Slow motion videos work, but that's about it. 
The detailing isn't really great and the colors are washed out as well as the contrast being lackluster. It also has the tendency to drop frames at times. One really cool feature about the Mate 10 Pro is the ability to shoot 720p videos with an electronic read fake depth of field. It's not really good, especially if you're panning and the effect does look artificial at times. However, I don't think there's any other phone that currently supports this and it is paving the way for the rest and this definitely is the way forward. If portrait mode comes to videos, it can really change smartphone videography for the better. The front facing camera too can record 1080p videos and it comes with EIS enabled by default. As a result, the footage is pretty stable and I like the quality much better than what the rear camera gives. It's not washed out nor does it lack contrast. There's even a video mode with beauty enabled but at a lower 720p resolution. So this is the front facing camera on the Mate 10 Pro recording videos. Let me know how the overall sharpness is, the stabilization as well as the contrast and how well it's picking up my audio as well. There are a few other features on the camera such as the 3D panorama, light painting, document scanning and time lapse mode. The camera has some AI features that automatically detect the scene and enhance a photo by applying a corresponding processing based on the nest city. We'll be talking about the AI in detail in an upcoming video. The Mate 10 Pro is a splendid camera overall in terms of both photo and video. Whatever downfalls it seems to have is related to a processing and can be corrected easily with software updates. While we can't be sure as to whether or not Huawei will fix them, at least you're already getting a great package and one that's worthy of the title of a flagship, especially with several USBs such as lossless 2x zoom, video with depth of field, etc. Thanks for watching this video. See you again in the next one.